Hey guys, Eric the Tech Guru here, and today I want to tell you why your internet is so slow. When talking about network connectivity between two devices, or internet connectivity in general, there are three major areas of concern. These areas are the link between your computer and your router or modem, the link between your router or modem and your internet service provider, or ISP, and the link between your ISP and the internet. All three of these areas have some room for error which can slow down your internet access. So let's start with the connection between your computer and your router or modem. If you're using a wireless connection, there are a few places where your connection could be slowed down. That could be interference from other wireless devices that may not be on the same frequency, but may operate on a larger scale. Those devices could be baby monitors or microwaves, or sometimes even televisions that are pretty old and emit a lot of radiation. Another wireless issue you could have is if your router is not up to industry standards. That is, a 802.11n router, and instead you're using something that's like a B or a G router. Those are limited to really small speeds, around 54 megabits per second, and that could really slow down the perceived internet access that you have. What I recommend for this solution is getting a nice dual-band 802.11ac wireless router. These can be purchased for as little as 100 bucks, and they give you much more flexibility of how much bandwidth you get over a wireless network. I'll put a link in the description below to give you a few options on what you might want to pick up. If you're using a wired connection, faults between your computer and your router may be a little less common. The most common problem I see when communicating between a computer and a router or a modem over a wired connection is that the port sizes just aren't big enough. If you have a 100 megabit port on your computer, that is the networking card is limited to 100 megabits per second, and a gigabit port on your router, the highest speed you're going to see on your computer is 100 megabits a second. Likewise, if you have a 100 megabit port on your router and a gigabit port on your computer, which is the most likely scenario, then that router is limiting the amount of bandwidth that you're getting. So if you're paying for, say, 150 megabits per second, your router is only able to put out 100 megabits per second on its wired port. That means you're losing 50 megabits per second of bandwidth that you're paying for. The best solution to this would be to upgrade your router. Now, if you have like Verizon or Comcast or something, they'll give you a gateway, which is a combination of a router, a modem, and a switch. And these gateways are normally restricted, so it's the only way that you can connect to the internet through your internet service provider. But, thankfully, these companies have begun to produce gigabit gateways so that you can get those higher speeds and take advantage of all the money that you're putting into your internet plan. Another area with plenty of room for error for slow internet speeds is the connection between your router and your internet service provider. If you pay for a specific amount of bandwidth, say, 85 megabits per second with your internet service provider, then your ISP is only going to allow you to access the internet at that speed, at most. Remember, when you're paying for an internet plan, you're paying for a maximum speed. That is not a guaranteed 100% all the time, 24-7 uptime speed of 85 megabits per second. That means that you can get up to 85 megabits per second. You'll probably get around 70 megabits per second on an average day. If your modem or router is damaged, that can also give you difficulties when accessing your internet service provider from your local residence. In that case, it's best to call up your ISP and get them to send out a repairman to fix your router. If you have a fiber optic box on the premises, that could also be damaged, in which case you would need to call up your ISP again and get them to come and replace or fix whatever needs replacing or fixing. If your network is heavily saturated, say there are tons of people on your wireless network or wired network that are trying to connect on the same line to your internet service provider, say mom is streaming movies off Netflix, dad is watching the game on TV or on internet TV, and your brother is playing some games while you're trying to download a new operating system. That's a lot of bandwidth being requested by a lot of different users, and that bandwidth has to be split between those users. 
Now, that might lower the perceived internet speeds that you're getting, but when you add them all up, you'll generally get the amount of bandwidth that you pay for. If some cables are down and there's a storm going on or the power goes out, then of course you're going to lose some amount of internet connectivity. If the power goes out and your router can't get power, you're not going to have internet access. If a tree falls and it takes out the cables running to your house that carry your broadband internet, you're not going to have internet access. If another tree falls in the neighborhood and that takes out a portion of your ISP's network, it's going to limit your bandwidth as everyone is going to be trying to connect without that link. Finally, there's the issue of connections between your internet service provider and the internet. If your internet service provider is having troubles, say a power outage or some kind of technical difficulty, it's probably on a large scale and they'll probably fix it as soon as they can, but there's nothing that you personally can do about it except report the outage. If, say you're accessing the internet on a Friday night when everybody is watching movies or whatever people who are at home on Friday nights do, i.e. play World of Warcraft or something, and everyone in the neighborhood is trying to play, or everyone in the neighborhood is trying to stream a movie, that would be considered a peak time. Now these peak times are times where internet service providers cannot guarantee you the maximum speeds you pay for. These peak times, you may find a clause in your internet service provider's contract saying that during peak times you may be limited to a specific amount of bandwidth. If you're trying to access a site or a computer whose IP address has been blacklisted by your internet service provider, that could also make you unable to access the internet. Say you're trying to go to the Pirate Bay, I don't condone you going to the Pirate Bay, and neither does your internet service provider. When you try to go to the Pirate Bay's website, it could block the website, and you would get a request from your internet service provider that says, I'm sorry, but we do not allow you to view this website. If you call that your internet slowing down or not functioning properly, then it is what it is. But there's nothing you can do about that. Alright, I think that's all for now. Tune in next time and I'll have some more technical explanations for you so you can figure out what's wrong with your computer or why your internet's going so slow and what you can do about it. That's all for now. I'm Eric the Tech Guru signing off. Remember, hit that subscribe button if you want to see some more content. And feel free to give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down depending on how you feel. If you have emotions that need to be expressed in a more complex way, make sure to leave a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks.